Hello, and welcome to another episode. This one is going to be a little bit less, you know, programmery than the usual episodes are. Uh, but I think this is a very important topic when we're talking about, you know, open source and programming and other related fields. So let's jump into it. So today we're going to be talking about Markdown, which is a common way to write text in a particular format that gets rendered in a bunch of different ways. Um, I think Markdown is a very important skill to have because you'll need it when you're, you know, working with documentation or GitHub issues or, you know, other other stuff like that. And it shows up in a lot of places, even in like, you know, Slack and other um, messaging software also often uses a flavor of Markdown. So we're going to cover a few basic things about Markdown and a few basic things or basic like concepts. And uh, hopefully you'll be able to write some stuff after this. Um, when I was teaching my brother programming, uh, I actually taught him Markdown first so that when I was teaching him stuff, he could document it in his own Markdown file, uh, which kind of you know gave him two things at once. But anyway, let's jump into it. So I just pasted some code. Uh, that we're <laughs> this is kind of my outline of what we're going to go over um or at least the things that i think are the most important and the first we're going to start off with is lists and we're going to do unordered and ordered lists so starting off this is an unordered list and basically it's just bullets but you start each bullet with a dash and a space and um actually we're going to talk about checkboxes right after lists and yeah, so each bullet in your bulleted list will give you an unordered list. And a good thing about most editors is you can click on the preview button and it'll show you how it renders. And so you can, you know, kind of flip back and forth as you write out your markdown code and see how it renders. So this is an unordered list. And if you want to do nested unordered lists, you can indent inside of a list. So indented item and you can see that uh, you end up with with a sub list like this now sometimes uh, when you're writing a markdown list and you have content on one line but you want to continue that bullet item without you know introducing new bulleted items what you can do is you can write code directly under it so let me show you what happens if we uh, if we write text that's not indented properly uh, you'll see that it broke the bulleted list and then it broke our indented bulleted list. And what we actually wanted is this text here to be part of this list item. And so what you can do is you can indent it to the number of spaces that are the front of this. So in this case, there are two characters here. So you'll indent two spaces to make that line up with this here. And then you'll see that this bullet, this bulleted item, or this text is part of this bulleted item. And we restored that indented list. So little tip there. So that's that's unordered lists with uh, dash. You can also use star instead of dash if you prefer. Um, Markdown has a lot of choices for all of its syntax, and you know sometimes sometimes uh, you know people prefer one over the other. I prefer the the uh, the hyphen because you don't have to press shift to get the character, but you know, doesn't doesn't actually matter. So that's unordered lists. Uh, Ordered lists or numbered lists um, are done, and we'll we'll just continue this same example. Uh, numbered lists are done with numbers. So if we add like one, two bar baz, uh, you can see this is you know three numbers in a row, and uh, since it's indented, we'll actually get the Roman numeral form of this. If we dedent this, uh, we can't just shift tab. <laughs> that would be nice. <laughs> Uh, if we dedent this, you'll see that we get, you know, the numbers as we expect. And one cool thing about numbered lists, and this is a this is a little tip that I think a lot of people miss when working with numbered lists, is you don't actually have to include the numbers in order. So if you just, like, make them all zero, you can see, well, the first one matters because it picks the, the first number in the list. But uh, all the numbers after that get auto-numbered. And in fact, if I remember right, you can use the uh, octothorpe, the uh, pound sign. <laughs> oh, nope, doesn't work in GitHub flavor. Oh well. But anyway, I usually find that uh, it's better to not number them. That way, if you were to come along and, you know, add in a new uh, number in your bulleted list or in your numbered list, you don't have to renumber everything. So that's why I usually prefer this form. But anyway, that's ordered and num or unordered and ordered lists. 
Now extending from the lists topic a little bit, we can get to checkboxes. I usually find this is one where people mess up a lot in GitHub uh, or don't know about this feature. So let's make an indented list here. Um, let's see, required item one, and we'll make required item two. And if we render that now, I'm actually just gonna delete this code up here, because that way just right at the top and flip back and forth. So I wanna make these checkboxes. And GitHub has this nice little extension here where if you, uh, do you need a space in between? I forget, yeah, you do need a space. So if you make a uh, square bracket, space, square bracket, these will turn into checkboxes. And if it's editable, you'll actually be able to check these boxes. Now to make the boxes checked, uh, and this is a mistake that I see a lot, people will put the X here but not get rid of the space and so it doesn't render properly. Uh, but if you put an X inside these square brackets, it'll render as a checked checkbox. Um, but yeah, that's you know just one of those one of those little things that's pretty good. Uh, let's talk about uh, actually let's talk about code blocks next, and then we'll talk about fixed width text. Uh, code blocks can be done by uh, in two ways. One of them I don't like because it's error prone, and you can't really tell it what syntax to highlight as. So the, the vanilla markdown is just to indent by four spaces. One, two, three, four. Um, print hello world. Print my name is Anthony. Uh, and this probably, will that work? No, we have to actually indent six spaces because it thinks it's part of this uh, bulleted list. Yeah, there we go. So you can see like this is a indented code block. Now, I don't really like this form because, well, for one reason, as you saw, uh, the indentation is a little bit ambiguous due to, you know, our bulleted list here. Uh, but also I can't say like, hey, this is Python source, so you should syntax highlight it. And so what I prefer to do is use what's called a fenced code block. And that doesn't require me to have this strange indentation, uh, but it requires me to have three backticks before and after. I believe you can also use tildes, but uh, backticks seem to work better. But anyway, here's the same code block as before. And if we want, we can give it a language. So let's say we wanted to highlight that as Python. And you can see this is highlighting code as Python, which is pretty neat. Uh, but you'll notice here, like, this is not part of that bulleted list. And if we do want to add it to this bulleted list, as before, we need to indent it by two spaces. So if we take this and indent it by two spaces, now you can see that it lines up with this bulleted item here and there's no white space at the beginning of this. So the markdown parser removed that leading white space. So that's code blocks. Uh, if you, you know, if you leave out the language, it'll just render it as plain text, uh, but I usually find it's best to include the language. Some of the common ones that you might use, uh, well, if you're working in Python, you'll have Python. Um, if you have a console in Python, so say you have, you know, your, uh, interactive prompt, which, you know, if you did this, you would get hello world. That's PyCon for Python console. Do this right. One, two, three. Oh, too many spaces. Um, and so you can see, like, it, it highlights this as the Python code here, but not the Python code here. Uh, another common one that you might run into is if you're doing shell sessions, and those are console. If we do two spaces and then, you know, echo high, you get high as the output. Uh, this is a, a shell session. And so it'll, it'll usually highlight this as bash and then this as the output and just leave it highlighted blue. But those are, those are three common ones that I run into a lot. Um, and so like console and PyCon are the like, you know, special ones that you might not see if you haven't worked with this a lot. But anyway, that's code blocks. So that's for blocks of code. If you need fixed width inline text, uh, you can just use a single um, backtick. So let's say like, you know, pip install precommit, uh, for example. So this will just make this text fixed width. And a common mistake that I see is people will try and use this fixed width text on multi-line text. And kind of works, but also kind of doesn't. So it, it turns this into just like a, s a single line thing. Um, because the, the single tick is only intended for inline fixed width text and not the code block sort of text. And so if you wanted a code block, you would extend this to, uh, to three ticks. Anyway, that's fixed width text. 
Uh, let's talk about headers next. So in headers, there's there's kind of two ways to do them in Markdown. Um, but I only use one of the forms because it makes way more sense to me. So the two forms, uh, let me show you the one that I use first, and then I'll show you the one that I find a little bit confusing. Uh, the single hash and then a space is going to be the largest header size that you have. Uh, this is a h1. Uh, if you're familiar with HTML, like usually, usually uh, the number of octothorps here lines up with the hn tag that you would use in HTML. Uh, and if you increase the number of octothorps, it will get smaller and smaller. So you can see, like, we got a big header out of the first one, a medium header out of the next one, and a smaller header out of that one, and you can go further and further and further. Um, I don't know if it allows, nope. Uh, it probably maxes out at like H6 or something. Let's see. Uh, H, yeah, H6 is where it maxes out. So this is like the, the super deep header. Anyway, that's headers. Uh, this is the form that I use because I, I find this a lot easier to understand. There is another form where you write out the um, you write out the header and then you underline it with a super, certain number of characters. And I don't like this for two reasons. One is like most style guides recommend that you line these up, and this is not a fixed width editor, so it's really hard to see this. And so you would have to like, you know, open up this file and you want to line these up next to this. Um, but I, I find that kind of hard to to figure out. Also, there's like three different forms of this header. Uh, there's also, I believe, tildes and dashes. <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember. Uh, we can actually copy and paste this, see what it does. Um, and I seem to remember... Mm... <laughs> nope. <laughs> I remember incorrectly. Maybe this one doesn't work. Yeah, there we go. So tildes is not a thing, um, but dashes are. And I think this is only h1 and h2. Um, yeah, that, that's what it looks like. But I don't I don't use this form of header. Uh, I find this is a lot more, a lot easier to control the size and figure out more obviously from the, the code what's going on. Anyway, okay, that's what, that's headers. Uh, let's talk about links next. There are two forms of links and I mostly use the reference format now that I know about it. I didn't know about it when I first wrote Markdown, uh, but sometimes the inline one makes sense as well. Let's go over both of those forms. So the inline form uh, takes brackets and then parentheses, and inside the brackets you'll have your link text. So, you know, maybe you were going to precommit.com and we want to you know, go visit precommit.com or something like that. Um, and so you'll have your link text in brackets and you'll have your link in parentheses here. And you'll see like this renders like this. And if you look at the bottom, it's, we click on this and it opens up precommit.com. Oh no, the build is failing. I'll have to fix that. Uh, so that's the, that's the inline link. The other one, which I find, uh, you know, disrupts the flow of text a lot less is the reference based links and a reference based link, um, uses just brackets and then you later show the reference at the bottom. Let me show you that first. Uh, so let's say I go visit Isotilly's GitHub profile, and then you can make a reference down here. And you can actually put the reference anywhere in the document, uh, I believe. So I, know, I usually find that if you put it right after the paragraph you're talking about, that it's easiest to read from a plain text perspective. But you know, if it's getting rendered, it doesn't actually matter. Yeah, so you can see here that like I changed that link in line and it goes to github.com slash acetilly. That's that's reference-based links. And you know, you can you can have as many of these as you want. So if we wanted to make GitHub a link, we could do that. And they don't have to be in any particular order. And you'll see that both of those rank links now render. Okay, so that's that's links. Um, and let's talk about images next. So images use a very similar syntax to links. Um, I find that I always write this and then paste the link in here. Let's actually uh, grab ourselves an image link. <laughs> so let's say we want to we want to give someone this super high five ship it link. Um, you can use bang bracket bracket, uh, 
parentheses and then the, the image link. And this is actually the alt text, so if you want this to be accessible, you can put like cat saying ship it by five. Uh, and you can put alt text in here so that if the image doesn't render or if you're a screen reader, you'll get the alt text. And if we preview that, you'll see that we, we get that little gif there. Now GitHub actually does a clever thing for image links. They go and fetch the uh, the image and rehost it on their server. So you can see like, even though I put in this fluffy.cc link, it went, uh, GitHub went and downloaded and re-uploaded that to camo.githubusercontent.com. And this is, you know, a little clever thing that GitHub does to save some other people bandwidth, but also, you know, caching and speed and other stuff like that. But anyway, that's, that's the form for this. Uh, the alt text is optional, so you can really just, you know, uh, put your put your link there and, and that works. So that's images. Uh, let's talk about bold and italic next. Um, this is if you want to add emphasis to particular parts of your text. And bold can be done with two stars and italic can be done with an underscore before and after. And um, yeah, sometimes I forget. <laughs> sometimes if you forget two stars, you'll actually just get italic. Uh, instead because that also works, but I, I usually try and use one or the other and so you can see uh, We get bold with two stars and italic with one underscore and you can actually combine the two as well. So if we uh, Bold this bold and italic we can do that there And the last one to talk about is quotes and I usually use this when replying to someone else. So let's say, you know, like um, You should fix this Okay, I have fixed it. Um, if you have a right angle bracket followed by a space, uh, you'll end up with a, a block quote like this. And so it'll, it'll render like that. And you can make this multiple lines. So you can say like, it would be better if you use a semicolon or something like that. And you'll see that it renders like this. And you can also nest these. So if you have a nested block quote, you'll you know, get, oh, that didn't work. <laughs> I guess sometimes you have to, you know, separate it by a line if you're doing special nesting. So you can see this this double nested quote, and then we got a single nested quote. But you know, sometimes Markdown is a little bit quirky, and that's why I recommend, you know, clicking the preview uh, to make sure that it's rendering how you expect. But anyway, hopefully this was a quick crash course and helpful about how to work with Markdown. Um, in particular, GitHub's flavor of Markdown. There's there's a whole bunch of flavors of Markdown, but I find that, you know, GitHub's is pretty reasonable. I hope you enjoyed, and if you have additional questions or things you want to see, you know, leave a comment below, or reach out to me on Twitter, or hang out in my Twitch stream. But thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.